by the Rasa developed during the Madhya Madhakari platform stage. Are we recording yet or not? Yeah, we're live. Are we live? Yes. Okay, so good. So the jiva in the body, the jiva can take a body of a man, take a body of a woman, can take a body of a dog, can take a body of a of a germ, can take the body of a plant, a, a, a grain of wheat. The jiva can go anywhere that consciousness and reproduction is taking place. So it's still a prabhu. It's still prabhu because we consider, if I look at you, Mahaprabhu, I am seeing you as part and parcel of Krishna. Krishna is the all-attractive source of life. You are part and parcel of the all-attractive source of life. You, not your body, but you, the conscious living being inside your body. So, when I see the conscious living being inside the body, naturally, I have to say Prabhu because I'm speaking to part of Krishna. That's how greatly we honor one another as Vaishnavas, that we I mean, honor one Vaishnava. another as part and parcel of God, not as big, big Rockefeller or big, big uh, real estate guy or whatever. Whatever now, is done in the material world, whether rich or poor, is irrelevant to our perception of our fellow creatures, which is, regardless of caste, or you could say social position, or even species, we call Prabhu. We can say Prabhu, because which part and parcel of Krishna is not part and parcel of Krishna? Whoever is part and parcel of Krishna means God, and that means Prabhu. Hey, Krishna, thank you. Now, did You're Prabhupada welcome. use the word Prabhu, or did he call women Mataji? I'm sorry? Mataji? Did he address them? Yeah, yes. did Prabhupada? We can say Mata, Mataji. Mataji means little, Mata means mother. Mataji means okay. little mother. So socialize, socializing with people, you can refer to women not as you know, sex objects or not as uh, not and as uh, inferior creatures, but as your mother. So mother means I have to offer respect and adoration to anyone who is whoever is my mother, I have to offer my respect and adoration as the son. So if I call someone Madhiji, I am honoring her as though she were my mother. And that is required because Prabhupada uh, uh, said we cannot go into a room alone with any woman because the woman is like fire and the man is like butter. The minute you put a man and woman in the same space, the butter starts to melt. And that's not good for spiritual advancement. So that's why we say Matha, because we don't have that sort of feeling toward our mother. How did Prabhupada address? Did, did he say Ma, Prabhu to female women also, or did he say Mataji? I'm sorry, say again? How did Prabhupada address women or uh, female devotees? Did well, he say, remember, he's the spiritual master. So he will not say Prabhu, except on the rarest of occasions, because Prabhu implies master. If he's the spiritual master, everyone would, will, and people don't even call Prabhupada Prabhu. They, they, they address him as his title, Oh, Srila Prabhupada, not Prabhu, because he's beyond that relationship. He is the absolute master, and we are the absolute servant. However, there has been occasions uh, when Prabhupada 
turned to a disciple of his and referred to him as Prabhu. And I can give you an example in the La Cienega Temple in Los Angeles. Merlin Orr painted a big picture copying the picture of uh, S.C. Banerjee's picture of the Radha Krishna and the immediate gopis, you know, the one where they're standing in there with gopis fanning out to each side, a horizontal picture. He took that print and he copied it into a big painting. That painting is still in the Guda Beach Temple. And that uh, it was in Los Angeles, but then it was moved to Laguna Beach. And it was big, like six feet high and maybe eight, 10 feet wide. And um, when that painting was there, uh, once again, the painting was on the wall opposite where Prabhupada was sitting on his asana. That's before he had the Vyasa son uh, that I made, that I built for him. And Prabhupada would go there, the deities on his left shoulder. He offers his dandavats to the deities three times for the three sets of deities. Then he walks forward, goes up a little flight of stairs to the stage, and then, you know, just a few steps. Then he turns and he goes and sits down. Well, when he sat down, uh, we had arranged the painting. Merlidar, the artist, had, had arranged the painting to be directly in front of Srila Prabhupada. When Prabhupada sat down and gazed across at this fantastically well-painted picture of Radha Krishna and the Gopis, he said, who has done this? And uh, what, probably Tamal or someone like said, oh, Srila Prabhupada, Merlidar painted this. Merlinar was the artist. Name. He said, Merlinar Prabhu or Merlinar painted it. And then Merlinar stepped forward. You know, you never know if you're going to get ripped into shreds or if you're going to be praised by Srila Prabhupada. We, because we see our own imperfections, imagine we deserve to be ripped to shreds because it's not as perfect as Krishna is himself. Yet, Merlinar obviously was hoping that Prabhupada would like the painting. So he was standing there sort of obscurely. And when Prabhupada said, who has painted Merlidar? Uh, Tamal urged Merlidar to step forward. And Merlidar came forward with his hands folded, looking at Prabhupada, gazing at Srila Prabhupada while he was standing. And Prabhupada is above him because he's like two, three feet higher on the stage. And Prabhupada looked at Merlidar and said, Srimad Merlinar Prabhu, he said, your painting is very wonderful. And so he said Prabhu to Merlinar to give him the recognition that goes beyond the normal way the guru speaks to his disciple. He indicated, obviously, by calling him Prabhu, you have done something so great that it is it amazes me. Therefore, I call you Prabhu. Whereas if you're not simply sitting at my feet, studying my, the, what I'm teaching, then you are not Prabhu to me. You are my student and the student is never Prabhu. Okay? Is that okay? Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai. So who is on board with us so far? I, Mahaprabhu, just joined in about 10 minutes ago. Oh, very nice. Mahaprabhu, we've been here for a while. There's Banu, there's Shravan, it appears. Another Dave. Or, or, or yes, Prabhu, I'm here. Yes, we're here. We're here. We're here. And Rupa Manjari is not yet on board. Hey, boy. Is she is or not yet? Did you send the invitation? Did you send the invitation? 
Not yet. Sent you the invitation, right? Ramachandra Babu. About Devoti Shreya. Is she with us if tonight? She does yes. Come on, if yes. Yes. Does come on. Why not have her read that paper that she wrote for the Real Iskon web, uh, Facebook page? Yes, it has been sent. So let me just give her a call. One second. Let's see if she picks up. Give me a few minutes. Okay. That's a phone call. Hare Krishna to everyone. Thank you for having me tonight. You are having having you. You are you are our inspiration. Because Rama Rama. Exactly. Okay. Who after, no one picked when, up. No one picked up? Okay. Yeah. When someone when someone when when someone picks up Krishna consciousness and takes it excellently from the very moment they hear, that person is called Prabhu. What do you mean excellent? Well, I mean look at Ma, look at Mahaprabhu. He's not from the India, he's not from the Vaishnav tradition, but he's picked up and understood Krishna consciousness so quickly, so eagerly, so clearly, so powerfully, that how can we not call him Prabhu? Jai. Thank you. That's the, that's the distinction that we have when we're dealing with people. We, in we fact, have to understand them. We want Mahaprabhu. to understand them. What? Go ahead. We in fact are calling him Mahaprabhu. <laughs> yeah. Say it again. That's why you named right. Mahaprabhu Das. Yeah. Bandu, you're you're not live, are you? I think if you're looking at a picture. Yes, Bandu wants to copy me. I, 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 pref <laughs> I, I prefer to see Bandu in person. For the simple reason, because of my hearing impairment, I like to lip read. Vanu Prabhu, you got to be on stuff. camera. Okay. Come on. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Vanu. I must say, you look better than you do in your photograph, that's for sure. Okay. Photograph is nice, but the live Vanu, that's even better. Alive and kicking. Definitely kicking. <laughs> okay. So what's the next question? Right. Shravan is here. Long time no see, Shravan. Haribo, Shravan. He's, he's muted. Haribo, Prabhu. Sorry, it takes like a few seconds. No problem. Ananda Dev. Hi. Yes. Hare Krishna. Hey. Hare Krishna. Ananda Dev what? is hiding behind that painting that I actually designed. Hi. I mean, painting. painting of the, for the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's actually modeled after a French painting, but we modified it to make it transcendental like this, and it is. Quite transcendental. Ah. I have a question for today. What, okay. Manu? I have we a created what, what we ended up An calling Neo Vedic art. Manu Prabhu has a question. Yes, right, Manu Prabhu, go. Go ahead. Manu the Prabhu. material world is, com is coming from Krishna. Yes. How is the material, the material world. The what? The material, material world. Yes. Is also coming from Krishna. It is Krishna's energy. So is it also a real, a real thing? Well, why the, is it called Maya? The, the you know, of course it's Maya. The material world is enclosed in something called, you know, here we have the. Brahma Jyoti, the spiritual world in which the Brahma Jyoti 
is unlimitedly distributed. Uh, it, there is the place called the Mahatattva, and the Mahatattva is a said roughly one quarter the size of the spiritual sky, which is interesting because the spiritual sky is infinite in size. So how is something one quarter of infinity? Anyhow, we can say that if, you know, how long is a piece of string? You say twice as long as half of it. So that's how long a piece of string is. So how big is the Mahatato? It's roughly one quarter of the size of the spiritual sky and the spiritual sky is infinite. But within that Mahatattva, the Vishnus start producing, Mahavishnu breathes out universes. And those universes are, by their very nature, material energy. And all the jivas that come out are placed into those universes within material bodies. So the, the material body is, the jivas were sucked into the body of Vishnu, but all the universes are reversed and are sucked up by Vishnu into his body. That after some period of time, not that the time is involved with Vishnu, the, the universes are ex exuded again out the bubbles, but coming out of his nose, his skin, his eyes, his mouth, hands, every part of his body, bubbles are coming out. In each bubble, unlimited bubbles, each bubble is a material universe, and in each material universe, a Brahma manifests. Some Brahmas like ours are pure devotees, Uttamanakaris, and other Brahmas are not. There's all sorts of universes, one for everybody's taste. Ours is a middle sort of universe, but rather small because our Brahma only has four heads, whereas some Brahmas have hundreds of thousands of heads or even millions of heads. That would be a very, very big universe. You know, scientists are really trying to figure out the nature of the universe. Little do they know that there are so many universes and they can't even figure out the one we're in. For one reason only, they haven't read the Brahma Samhita. If the scientists read the Brahma Samhita, then all of, the, all of their astronomy and practices would go out the window because they would no longer be of any value. Is the material creation also real? Real in what sense? It's temporary. The material energy is temporary. That's why our relationship with matter is temporary. In other words, the jiva, we are so jivas. This is not a dream, Prabhu? We're pure spirit soul. But if we take a material body, that body will die. Why? Because the material energy is not, eter is not eternal. Are we not in a dream? I'm sorry? Are we not in a dream, like a gross dream versus dream? a subtle dream? Well, are we, are we, are we in a dream? Uh, we can dream. Now, our, our being in the material body, I mean, how would you distinguish between being in a material body and dreaming? Dreaming is something you do when you're in a material body. Right? The jiva doesn't dream. Well, a dream can be a subtle dream, whereas uh, what we are experiencing during the daytime can be like a gross dream, because that will also disappear in due time. Well, if, right. then take into account that we are dealing with, we're dealing with the astral plane in the material universe, earth, fire, water, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and ego. Ether, in the ether is the astral plane. So when we go into the astral plane, we can have disembodied experiences. When psychics do psychic readings, they do it from the astral plane. When people die and become ghosts, they go to the astral plane. When people go to the planets of the angels, the Gandharvas, 
they go up through the astral plane. So the astral plane is the uh, is the ether, etheric plane. So it's one of the material energies. But as far as the, you see, the way you're describing it, you're making it seem as though there's some reality to the forms in dreams or in our body. They're not real. There is no reality to the form of our body. It's in, it is simply an imaginary connect, construction that our mind says this is a body, but it's not really anything. It's just earth, fire, water, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and ego. The jiva is what is real, not the mind and not the body. The body, is part, well, How the body is part of the material creation. It is temporary. The, bo the, bo the body, the body yeah. is the body is created by karma. Nothing else. Whatever I mean, your previous life you did, and you leave your body, so-called dying. You don't really die, but you leave the body. The body dies. When the body dies, you take another body. So it's temporary. You cannot say it's not real. Can't say it's not real? Well, what's it's the real part? What's the real part? How do you it's define solid. real? How do you solid. define real? Anu, come on. How do you define real? I mean, you just said the, the material world is real, but it's temporary. So everything, the body well, is part of the material world. Well, it's... <laughs> It's like an illusion is a real illusion. A dream is a real dream. A fantasy is a real fantasy. I mean, real is only, only one thing is real. That's the jiva. Everything else that's temporary is not real in the sense that the jiva is real. You are real. Your body is not real. Yeah. Krishna is real. The Jeep is real and Krishna is real, but nothing else is real. It's all fantastic, fanta fant phantasmagoria. It is just a fantasy. An illusion. Is it, yeah, is it a real illusion? Well, that's sort of an oxymoron, isn't it? How can an illusion be real? But I mean, if it's an actual illusion, then it's a real illusion, meaning it's a real thing that doesn't exist. It really doesn't exist, is what a real illusion is. But there's no substantive reality, Banu, to the uh, temporary body or the mind. I mean, it's real because it's coming from Krishna. Everything is coming from Krishna, therefore it's real. The bubble is from Krishna. It is not coming from It is not coming from Krishna. It is coming from the material energy. Mahavishnu, all the bubbles are created and the entire universes are created as they breathe. So, Mahavishnu exudes the universes. The universes are made of earth, fire, water, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and ego. Those are habitats for jivas to live in fantasy experiences, fantasy lives. You can't call a fantasy real. Maybe temporary. I'm not what? calling it real. I'm not calling it real. Who has Permanent told you all death. these things? It's you not at all it. what we've been talking about. I mean, you're contradicting yourself. Therefore, I'm arguing. What are you saying? Say again. All that is there in the material world, the material world is temporary. Yes. It is real, therefore, but it is, that is what, that what? Is what the... Okay, yes, yes. if it's real, okay, Badu, if it's real, then what is the basis of its reality? What is the substantive basis Coming of the reality Vishnu. of illusion? The energy of Vishnu. Vishnu does not produce anything material. He, I mean, um, uh, Mahamaya, um, Subhadra, Subhadra is the energy in the spiritual world and Badra is the energy in the material world. Mahamaya, Yogamaya. 
the same entity but do two different roles in the spiritual and the material world not exactly the same maya is not krishna in fact maya will never appear in front of krishna if krishna is present maya devi hides behind krishna because yeah. she cannot she cannot she cannot face krishna considering that her job is to keep the uh all the jivas in illusion or keep them in maya maya devi cannot face krishna because she is going against krishna's desire which is that all the living beings be with him not simply wandering around the material world it will world is have any, you can say on the point what on the point that paramatma you, somebody has told you all this stuff and it wasn't me <laughs> no 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 i'm not talking about you telling me i'm, I'm following i'm getting it from the books and same proper books oh for I mean, show me the quotes for proper books the material world is real since Since, Show me since, this quote where Prabhupada says that Maya is real. No, no, no. Let, let me complete it. It is real. I mean, it is real because I mean, the Paramatma has entered into every molecule and every living creature, and and he stays there as the stays there with the living entity, okay. and he is there also. They entered into every atom. Yeah. So but, they, but but Bhanu, Paramatma does not come in contact with those things. Only Shiva, only Shiva comes in contact with material energy. We have gone through this a month or two ago. Only Shiva comes in contact with material energy, Maya. He comes. Do you know why Shiva comes in contact with Maya? I mean, it's it's, it's like Achinta Beda Beda Tatva. He he comes in contact, but he doesn't come in contact. No, he comes in contact. That's why he's compared to yogurt, not milk. I'm talking he, about uh, Lord Lord Vishnu. Achinta beda beda tatva. He comes in contact. We're not talking about Vishnu. Vishnu doesn't come in contact with matter. He is there in every particle. No, Vishnu doesn't come in contact with the material nature. Shiva comes in contact with matter. Shiva has intimate contact with Maya. Do you know why? I mean, you're taking one aspect of it. There are two aspects. He comes in contact, but he doesn't come in contact. There are two uh, two lines which no, go simultaneously. No. It's like saying yogurt is curdled and not curdled at the same time. Are no, you, I'm talking. Are you saying, not, not, are, are you no. saying there's no distinction between yogurt and milk? Are they exactly I mean, the same? Or they're in the material world also. Is maintaining it. Through him, everything, uh, every all the devtas. No, no, he is not devtas. maintaining it, Prabhu. He is destroying it. Not Vishnu. Vishnu is maintaining. Shiva is destroying. Brahma is creating. I am talking about Lord Vishnu. What? Okay, may I say something, Prabhu? Okay, oh, Vishnu ahead, does not but... come in contact with the nature. What? Vishnu does not come in contact with material nature. Correct. But he also comes in contact since he enters into each molecule. He's present in each jiva also. He no, comes in contact. Doesn't come in that's contact. That's not. Oh. That is not true. He doesn't come in contact. He. In the, when Vishnu is in the heart of every atom, center of every atom, he is not in contact with the material energy. He's simply existing transcendentally inside of that space, just like the jiva is contaminated by Maya. But if the jiva were Vishnu, then the jiva would be inside the body and not come in contact with the body. The jiva is actually. Only and psychologically involved with the body, but the jiva is part and parcel of Krishna, 
and Krishna never comes in contact with matter. End of story. Jai, uh, Shravan Prabhu, you wanted to say something, please. It's a very interesting discussion that's going on. <laughs> Jai. But, uh, Lord Vishnu does not come in contact with material nature. Yeah, what did correct. Been... correct. Yeah. He, he when Vishnu, that. Yeah. That, that is true, but also true is that Vishnu, by coming into contact with material nature, becomes Shiva, which is irreversible. Vishnu can become Shiva, but Shiva cannot become Vishnu. Because Vishu is never in contact with material energy of any sort whatsoever. Whoever has told you that has a very <laughs> poor fund of knowledge. He's not very learned or intelligent. And he yeah, certainly yeah. hasn't read any of Prabhupada's books. All the teachings are it's probably an assumption by that. You should not listen uh -huh. to Mayavadis, impersonalists. They like to conflate everything. Whoever has told you this is teaching you Maya, not Krishna consciousness. So why listen to people teaching Maya? They're not qualified to teach you about Krishna. No problem. Jai, amazing. Manu Prabhu. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know so many good devotees. Ramachandra, you know Shravan. Nobody would tell you garbage like that. <laughs> I think Manu knows that. He's arguing for someone else. He must have listened to somebody in India. <laughs> Vishnu is not in contact with... Uh, Shiva, Shiva, worshippers, Shiva worshippers are very unhappy that they are worshipping a form of Vishnu that cannot be turned back into Vishnu. So they try to say that he can be turned back into Vishnu, but he can't. He doesn't. The Sh Shiva and Parvati, or Shiva and Maya Devi, are they have sex with each other? This is not happening with Lakshmi Narayan. No. Is the devil? So Shiva, Shiva has a crossover quality. Remember, Shiva drank the ocean of poison. You're not going to find Vishnu drinking an ocean of poison. You certainly won't yeah. find Krishna drinking an ocean of poison. But, but, Vishnu, but, but Shiva does drink the ocean of poison. That's why his neck is blue. Can Krishna do anything? We cannot restrict him to that he cannot do this or he cannot do that. He can do anything. Anything is possible for him. Like what? Come in contact with matter? No, no, not that. I'm drinking poison, I'm saying. No, Krishna doesn't drink poison. I mean, he... he he gobbled up the entire fire which occurred in Vrindavan. Look, look, there's an example of Putana. Putana smeared poison on her breast to kill Krishna. When Krishna set, drank from the breast of Putana, he didn't touch the poison. He drank all the milk and the life out of Putana, who then crashed down and became eight miles long with fangs and ugly face. Killed her. He didn't drink the poison. He drank the milk because he, he accepted her like mother. He accepted. See, Putara came as a murderer and of, of, of baby Krishna. Krishna accepted her because she was offering her breast. He accepted her in the mood of motherhood. So when he drank the milk out of her, when he drank the milk and her life force out of her body, and she died. Later on, they wow. found that she was like miles long and huge. 
her breasts were like the Himalayan mountains. They, the residents of Vrindavan were desperate to find her, have Krishna, and they looked everywhere they could and couldn't find her. Finally, they found him peeking from behind one of her breasts, and they all came up and rescued him, or so they thought, because even as a baby, he had rescued them, but they came to rescue him. Interesting, huh? That is the nature of pastimes. Just like when Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill, he picked, lifted it with his pinky, with his baby finger. And yet all the residents of Vrindavan said, oh my goodness, we cannot, he's only eight years old, we cannot allow this to go on. How can we allow Krishna to lift that huge mountain with just his finger? So they all ran underneath and having these crooks that they used for herding animals, they pushed up on the bottom of Govardhan Hill that Krishna was effortlessly lift, lifting. They, they pushed up on the, on the Govardhan Hill because they thought it was too heavy for Krishna. But that's the mood of devotees. They, in, they are never thinking Krishna is God. They're thinking Krishna is the most adorable child, therefore must be protected and helped whenever possible. Does that make sense? Manu. Yeah. We are the marginal energy of Krishna, right? I'm sorry? We are the marginal energy of Krishna. Yes. Marginal what means... The, what are the other two energies? Oh, there's... You tell me. Tell me, what are the two energies? The material energy and the transcendental superior energy. Okay. Krishna, so is, Krishna is directly Krishna and he's infinite in size. We are, the, as marginal energy, we are part and parcels of Krishna of the same nature as Krishna, exactly, <coughs> but different size. And along with that different size means that we are capable of contacting that matter, whereas Krishna never contacts matter. But matter is, is, is one of his energies, I'm saying. I'm sorry? The matter is one of his energies. I don't understand what you just said. The matter is what? Well, the three energies, marginal energy, superior energy, and material energy. Yes. So material energy is part of his energy. What? Marginal energy is part and parcel of Krishna. Inferior energy never comes in contact with Krishna. But we know that. Any six-year-old kid reading Krishna book will be, understand that right away. And that's another concept. Okay, I, may I accept that Krishna may not come in contact, but that is one, that, that is one of the energy of Krishna. That, uh, with, with the material energy, he creates the material universes. He impregnates the material energy with the souls. And that's how the universe is created. I don't quite understand what you're saying. He impregnates impregnate the material energy with the souls, and that's how the universe is created. I actually don't understand how Vishnu or what in what capacity Mahavishnu creates the uh, universes. But I only understand from what Prabhupada has taught us that Vishnu does not come in contact with material energy. But do you accept that material energy is also one of the energies of Krishna or Vishnu? It, well, it is in, it is 
The material energy is created by the desire of the of the jivas, not by the desire of Krishna. The jivas desire to leave Krishna and become God themselves. They want to be God. Therefore, that can only be done in a state of illusion. And that state of illusion is called maya. And it, when they enter into the realm of maya, then they can imagine that they are equal in form, matter, and potency to Lord Krishna, which is what everybody in this material world, even mice and rats and dogs and cats, plants, but to speak of humans, all believe that somehow they have become as that they themselves have now become God. Does it make sense? Illusion it's means I, th I think that I can be Prabhupada says all the jivas in the material world they want to be they want the kingdom of God without God. In other words they want to be God Does that make sense? I think, uh, because the jiva wants to become God, Krishna gives them the yes, power. Probably makes sense. Gives them the power of illusion. Because you cannot really become Krishna. As parts and parcels of Krishna. We are servants of Krishna. We never become the object of worship of every creature in the spiritual world. So we have to come to the material world under the influence of Maya Devi to imagine that we have become equal to God or even superior to God. Now, the atheist believes that he is superior to what other people refer to as God. I exist, meaning his mind and body exist, but God does not exist. So, Banoji, you're a very important person in this conversation. So I'm not altogether clear where you're going with this. No, no, no. You asked a different question and you took it to another different subject. Well, what was what is he wanted to discuss? It's okay. <laughs> I got the answer. What is your point? What do you want to discuss? I actually forgot it. Bhanu <laughs> forgot. You Bhanu got Bhanu. Uh, yeah, Bhanu Bhanu. Could I ask what is what is it that you are exploring? He's exploring something. Ask the question was uh, is the material world real? It might be temporary, but it is also real, I am asking. That was the question. The material world is real. Well, define real. Feeling. I mean, right, the, material, the material world is an illusion, but are you saying, are, are there such things as real illusions? Yes. So all, it's an all, all illusions are real illusions, but a real illusion doesn't exist. Manu Prabhu, can you find some quotes where Prabhupada is talking and what you're saying so it can make more sense? Like uh, uh, you're saying Prabhupada has said this, but where does he say it and yes, what no, context we can, is... We can find in Bhagavad Gita, this material world is temporary, but it's real. Like I don't have the Vedapis right now, I cannot... 
He says oh, it's re real. He says it's real. Oh, he reflection. Huh? It's, no? it's real only in the mind. Yeah, that's right. Only in it's the a, mind. It's an illusion. It's like a dream. Mm. It has no substance. Are you finding it, Prabhu? No, I'm not finding it. I'm half asleep. Okay. Huh. No, why not look to see material energy as real? How can we find the material energy to be real? Maybe saying material world appears real, appears real. Well, yeah, I think that's that, that it appears real, but it isn't real. No, why? Why does the word, word temporary? Why? Why is the word temporary used? Because it is used because it is real, but it is temporary. That's what it is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Well, show sure. give the quote. I can't. How can I? I mean, I can't search the proper the books. Okay, I'll try searching it. The material world appears real. I think I'll search for that on my phone and see what comes up. Appears out. real, yes. The material search world the appears search real. Appears. Search for what temporary. Just like a when you go to the movie theater and you see the projection on the screen, it appears to be people up there. But it's not really people, right? There's just a shadow or a reflection. The film, you shine light through the film, and on the screen it looks like it's people, so it appears to be real. And if it's a 3D movie, it really appears to be real. It appears to be that they're driving, but it's a backdrop. Yes. I just found it. Sorry, Bhano. Yes, please. Okay. Can you uh, let me share the screen? Okay. Let me Wonderful do discussion. Hare Krishna. Hare right. Krishna. Banu, Banu Krishna Das? Which yeah. one? Okay. Only one. Oh, you only have one. Go ahead, Banu Prabhu. So, did he find anything? Here we go. Here it. Ba Bhagavad Gita introduction, I think so. Introduction. Ishvara, Jiva, Prakriti, eternal time and karma are all explained in Bhagavad Gita. Out of these five, the Lord, the living team, living entities, material nature, and time are eternal. The, manif the manifestation of Prakriti may be temporary, but it is not false. Some mm. philosophers say that the manifestation of material nature is false. But according to the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita, or according to the philosophy of Vaishnavas, this is not so. The manifestation of the world is not accepted as false. It is accepted as real, but temporary. So real in comparison to what? That's what is is, the is that the purport? Prabhupada's purport? Introduction, Bhagavad Gita introduction. Well, does Srila Prabhupada give is the verse also there? It's an introduction, Prabhu. Huh? It's from the introduction of Bhagavad Gita. Acha. So there's nothing before that. I found the, uh, read the whole para. Ishvara, Jiva, Prakriti, eternal time, and karma are all explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Out of these five, the Lord, the living entities, material nature, and time are eternal. The manifestation of Prakriti may be temporary, but it is not false. Some philosophers 
say that the manifestation of material nature is false. But according to the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita or according to the philosophy of the Vaishnavas, this is not so. The manifestation of the world is not accepted as false. It is accepted as real, but temporary. And that's what I was saying all this time. Uh, so, Jai. Okay. It's real, but temporary. But interestingly, by the way, somebody disabled my video. As long as we can hear you, you're fine. Well, the host can put it back on again. Banu, can okay. you put my... Can you put Papa my Chandra. video back on? Mahanu Prabhu, okay. can you put it on again? Again. I don't know. Trying to see Narayan. Right there. Well, the host disabled my video. No, okay. what's that? Ask to turn You'll be on back. the. Yeah, anyway. ask, ask. Yeah, yes, one second. Banu, aren't you the host tonight? No, it's Ramachandra. I'm the host yes. now. The thing between in between me and uh, Ronald, we were switching. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, one second. <laughs> Let me do it. No, 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 please keep speaking. I'll I'll turn it on. I gotta figure it out first. Please. You click on the video button, Prabhu. Turn video on. Well, you should have a control, right? Don't you have my icon? Then it should you can just punch on it and it should come up with the video. No, we can only ask you to turn on the video. We cannot turn on the video. That's right. Okay. So sat means eternal, asat means temporary. So you can say temporary is not unreal, but temporary compared to sat has no particular status whatsoever. How can Is the temporary real? Asat, well, yeah, it's really, it, it's a, it's like an illusion is not real, but it is a real illusion. It is okay. temporary, but not false. That's what it is written there. Is that an illusion? Yes, that's a real illusion. Okay, is that a real illusion real? No, it's not real, but it is a real illusion. I mean, Meaning we cannot add other words, illusion and all those words, we cannot put it in the, in that context. That would be make, uh, complicating okay, the matter. Then what, what, Baru, then what is your explanation? It is temporary, but it's not false. The temporary well, thing. Well, false now, in terms of what? It gets created and it gets destroyed. Sometimes it remains unmanifested, then it again gets created, the material world. It get, it get when it is not it is not manifested it becomes the mahatattva then again it gets created so it is temporary the material world is temporary no it doesn't become the mahatattva the mahatattva when it is withdrawn back into the body of Vishnu the the universe has ceased to exist and everything in them ceases to exist except the jivas okay mm -hmm. I, can I read something when sure. Everyone is done commenting? Okay, go ahead. Sure. Try. So Prabhupada is saying in dialectic spiritualism, we're talking about temporary and... So Prabhupada is saying, Srila Prabhupada says, this body is a temporary manifestation. Uh, this body is a temporary manifestation and this soul is always existing. Uh, this body is yeah. a temporary manifestation and this soul is always existing. Eventually, this body will not exist. But the owner, but the owner of the body is eternal and ex existing eternally. Right? But the exactly. owner of this body... Is that Ramachandra? Okay. Yes, that's me. Uh, could you turn my video back on? I asked you to start the video, Narayan Prabhu. You have to click on start video. 
I cannot turn on your video. I ha it says right here. Excuse me, the host has asked you to start your. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, got it. We cannot control it. Oh no, no, no! It said the too. host. It oh, said yeah, I yeah. can't turn. It was saying that I cannot turn on the video because the oh, host okay. has disabled it. Now you okay, re-enabled so, it, but I didn't notice the difference. Like no, no problem. Side. Okay. So, so now, Jay, keep so, going. I like the point yes. you're making, so keep going. Yes. Yes. Eventually, this body will not exist, but the owner of the body is eternal and existing eternally. So then Prabhupada says, if, some, if, something is temp oh, if something is a temporary manifestation, if something is a temporary manifestation, we can say that it is simultaneously existing and not existing. Huh? If, some, if something is a temporary manifestation, we can say that it is simultaneously existing and not existing yes. on the material on the because, material platform. Because when it now. doesn't exist, it's an illusion, but it's a real illusion. But the illusion is not real, but it's a real but illusion. They, but they are not Genuine. saying it's not existing. It is simultaneously existing and not existing. Both 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 the things are there over there. Wait, wait, wait let's finish it then. We, we can have a discussion. On the material platform, yeah, on the material platform, everything is existing and not existing because it is temporary. On the material platform, everything is existing and not existing because it is temporary. For instance, we are existing in this room right now, but at the next moment, we may not be existing. The whole manifestation is like that. So, Prabhupada says about I'm you I'm using this typewriter. How can you say I'm not using? How can you say this is false? Because I'm using it. It is I'm using it for Krishna service, and it is there, right? It's being used and practically using it. So it is real. He says the example. Well, Prabhupada explained that, didn't he? Or I explained what Prabhupada said to Himavadi is that it becomes spiritualized. No, it may be, it, it, he's saying remember, that example, Prabhupada, the sense of every, every, body every, could be confused as being a material body. Anyone, so anyone, say if, if you are using the spectacles, you are using it, you're feeling it, you're through that, you're seeing things clearly. So that is real, he's saying, explaining it. But temporary. Well, yeah, but I mean, anything that's temporary and real at the same time is pretty useless, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that, that is the material world. It is temporary, but it is real. It's not false. False? Well, what do you mean by false? If compared to the soul, it is false. Compared to its own existence, it's not false. No, I'm not adding my own words. That's why it's temporary. It's temporary. But it's that we like, I'll share the quote again. That's why it's not false. That's what it is stated there. So, what do you mean by false? You, normally, people say something's false, but it doesn't the, the same the as reality. The prakriti may be temporary, but it is not false. Some okay, philosophers def, say the manifestation. False. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what do you mean define false? Everyone knows what is false. Or, we can't okay, put false, it in the it. False means it does. Okay. If it is not false, it means it is temporary. It's an illusory. So it's not a false illusion. It's a real illusion. But an illusion is not real in the sense that something of substance is real. In other words, sat is real. Asat can have an illusory form within it is it's a real illusory form. But the form that's really illusory is not real form, it is an illusory form. And we have to take, uh, take it to the word and we cannot interpret in our own way. So wh where are you taking this? Prabhupada books. What, no, no, what is your objective? No, no, it's, I was just making a point and we were going deep into the discussion. Making a point, but no, you, you have not yet made a point. Because <clears throat> if you're saying that 
an illusion is not false because it's a real illusion, that doesn't make the illusion a reality. It just means it's a real life. illusion. Non, it's it's a real the non term illusion. Yeah, I haven't discussed the term illusion because it's we were discussing about the word temporary. We can talk about the word temporary, but illusion hasn't been the word hasn't got been mentioned in this uh, verse. Well, I think the, the word illusion was used in the other quote. No. No problem. So you're saying there's been no use of the word illusion tonight? Yeah. So what it do you was, call... It was Mahaprabhu that brought up the term illusion. Okay. But in the Gita, I thought it said something about illusion there. The word illusion appeared. I'll share it this. Didn't, it didn't Maybe appear? We can look it up. Well, it, it make was it up on the screen before. Uh, maybe, was I mistaken? I could be mistaken, but I thought I saw the word illusion. Anyway, we'll move on. We're discussing a lot on this. So, some talk. so, Banu, if you're making a distinction, if the material energy is not false, compared to what? Compared to eternal. That's true. Eternity is true. This is not false. That eternity, eternal spiritual world is true, and this compared to spiritual world, this, you cannot say this is false, but it is temporary. The material world, temporary, doesn't it so, mean false? Okay, define what? false. Then, what is? How do you define false? Not true. It's a very simplistic to understand because it's it's not it's not false. They're saying okay, false in the sense. What it is, is temporary. What does false mean? Opposite of true. The deviation. False. The spiritual is world is it. true. False the spiritual is world is not, true. Not true, real. False is the opposite of reality. The exact word is the opposite of true. When you say true, true doesn't mean anything, does it? What does true mean? Jiva. Well, that's true, yes. Uh, what, by the way, I'm not quite sure what you want to accomplish out of this. Obviously, there's an underlying belief no, no. that you have that I mean, is being served you... by what you're saying. Well, you no, I just quoted the Shastra. If you the want same. to agree with it, you agree, other will we can move on to okay. another topic. No, let's settle this one. Are you saying that real, illusion and reality are the same? No, I don't think it's what saying are you that. Saying? You say it's true, but true doesn't mean anything. True, <laughs> true means it's not a lie. Can you give me a it's, screen and share access, Prabhu? Because okay. You can discuss by okay. sharing the screen. Like one second. One second. When you say illusion and reality, how do you compare them? How do you compare illusion to reality? That's what you've been doing. Can we repeat the quote where the illusion has come out? Come out so we can discuss on it. I'm sorry. Where has the quote? Where has the quote, uh, including illusion, has come up? Where does I the don't quote understand. Where, I have no question. idea what you're saying. Could you speak more gradually, maybe more slowly? I'm interested in what you have to say, but I can't understand it. I mean, where does the quote uh, come up where it includes illusion? Yeah, illusion. What is illusion? How do you define illusion? The dream. Yeah. Well, if, we, if we can forward the quote, that, a, dream, a dream is one type of illusion. Prabhupada, it, Prabhupada defines illusion as asat, or that which is not. You can see the quote of Prabhupada used many times. There's sat and asat. Sat means the jiva, eternally real. Asat means temporary and not real. Only the jiva is real. Asat is never real. 
That's why it's called asat. It's temporary. Mm. Right. You can say, well, so, temporary is real, I, but temporary is real only temporarily. It's not real in the absolute sense of the word. It's only so, real in the, like, Asian, like a dream, dream is real or a, a movie is real. Ishtagosti, all this thing is not real. You what? Know, all this Ishtagosti, this Sangha, we are discussing Shasta, all this is not I, I, real. I'm sorry, you're doing it again, Bhadu. I can't understand your words. You're too high this, Hang on. Can you, all this Ishtagosti, is it not real? What is not real? This Ishtagosti is that we're having, all this is not real. Of is course that, it's not real. What we're doing is discussing the real, not manifesting it. The, what is real is you are real, Banu, because you're a jiva. I'm real. Mahaprabhu is real. Everyone else here, Ramachandra is real. As jivas, as body, no. That is to my awesome. understanding, it was tem I thought it was temporary until until uh, some some years or maybe some lifetimes. Okay. Or what what extent it would be going on? What, what is the difference between thought and asat? That means, uh, pro, pro, huh? that means eternity. Sat is eternal, right? Yeah. Asat is temporary. The Prabhupada yeah. here says in, in, in dialectic spiritualism, what does he mean by real? Prabhupada saying, what does he mean by real to Ashtama Shundar? Then Prabhupada says, for us, reality means that which uh, no for us reality means that which does and will exist if uh, for us reality means that which does and will exist okay if this is not the case it is not real if this is not the case it is not real Prabhupada is saying okay so does asat ever actually exist no. That's the point. <laughs> so no matter what else you can say and how many words you can use to define it, asat is never real. Yes. It's temporary. Probably. It's not real. That's what it is quoted there. The, uh, uh, some philosophers think it's, it's not okay, called. Bharu, it's called can it's you temporary. Establish... That's what Bhagavad Gita is saying. What? Some philosophers think that it is temporary, that it is false, but it's not false, it is temporary. But is it real? Oh my God. Real means, according to Prabhupada, for us, reality means that which does and will will exist. Yeah. Yeah. Us, reality, if it yeah. is temporary, it is real for some point of time. After that, it is not real. Well, it's like a dream is real as long as you're dreaming. Yes, that's what Prabhupada says. It is like a dream or a hallucination because it is temporary. We cannot say that dream is real, although a dream, uh, although in a dream everything appears to be real. See what Prabhupada well, says. The istagosti is not real. What's the point of coming to istagosti and hearing it? If, oh, Harinam is the only real thing, then we can only do Harinam then. Only chant the, chant the holy name. That is the only real thing then. No, you are real. You, Banu, are real. You're part and parcel of Krishna. That makes you real. Imagining that your Banu is not real. That's called asat. You're identifying with that which is temporary. That is not real. Are you yeah. really Banu or are you really Jiva? Which are you? Are you the hey, body of Banu? Are you the body that identifies as Banu? Or are can, you the Jiva who is gradually I, trying can to the take sat, on his can eternal the form? Be in asat? I'm asking huh? a question. Can the Sat be in Asat? I don't understand what you're saying again. Can, can the Sat be can the Sat be in Asat? Can the sat be an asat? An asat or asat? 
Asat be in yeah. Can Asat be in Sat? No, no, no. It's opposite. You are saying can the Sat oh. be in Asat? A Asat means not Sat. Asat means not Sat. Sat means eternal. No, I'm not asking. Eternal definitely. means real. There's What's only it? one reality, Banu. That is Sat. Asat is never real. Unless you want to say the person who's in asat, so in the, the question is, can answer. Can the sat be in asat? In ourselves. Can the sat be in asat? Can sat, sat. become asat? Can sat be in asat? Can no. sat be no. in asat? No, well, that's no. what you are doing. You're to have an no. asat body with a sat soul inside of it. But uh, <laughs> it cannot the be jiva, the, the jiva uh, is the, asat. the body is asat. The jiva is inside the inanimate body, imagining it to be the soul. That is asat. How can how can how can the truth be in in false? It can be in something which is temporarily true. In something which is temporary, but it cannot be in something which is false. What is, uh, define false? I mean, false the definition is uh, false. How do you define false? The jiva, the jiva cannot be in something which is false. It can be define in something which is temporarily Manu. true. Temporary in terms of sat is false. Now you're looking at another point of view. I'm Because looking at another point of view. You're, 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 you're talking about... By the way, we finally, this is a um, Mr. We're working with each other, not just one person talking. I like that. So, so Sat means you as the eternal part and parcel of Krishna, spirit, soul. You have no dimension at this point, but as you develop your relationship with Krishna through the Madhya Madhikari platform, you gradually develop a form which is your spiritual form in the spiritual sky. Now, if the material world is asad, can the sad be in asad? That is a simple question. It cannot be. The answer. Can the soul be in the material world? Can, uh, the, can the sad, which is the soul, can, be in, can it be in asad, which you are proclaiming, pro proclaiming the material world to be? We are in the material world, and the material world is our thought. We how look out at this how can the daytime or nighttime, that is our thought. It has nothing to do with the soul. How I don't quite follow what how, are you can, saying. The, the, therefore, the answer is given in that verse that the material world is temporary, but it is not false. So what if is you go it? By if, the, not, if, you go, if you go by that quote, that answers that the sat cannot be in asat, it, but it can be in a temporary truth. Temporary truth. So what is the truth of asat? It's not asat. That's what I'm saying. What, is the truth, what is the truth of asat, Anu? You say it's temporary truth. What is the truth in asat? It's not asat. It's not asad. Therefore, it is it cannot. Dasat cannot be in asad. Therefore, the soul cannot be in something which is false. But it, it can only be in something which is temporary. But temporary is false. We are not. The soul is not, yeah, not the body. temporary. Yeah, the soul, soul is not, is the not body. temporary. Yeah. Material world. So, is, so if you are in a human body, there's no problem. The soul can be separate from the human body because the soul is separate from the human body. But when the mind convinces the soul that it is the body, that is false. <clears throat> no, this is a different concept uh, you're bringing. But, but when the material world is created and it is destroyed, and then again it is created and it is destroyed, it's not permanent. It is temporary because it is create, created at certain intervals and it is again destroyed at certain intervals. That itself so, shows that temporary. Compared to, compared to the spiritual world, it is false. Prabhupada uses the word false many times 
Material energy is not false. It is temporary. That's what it has been told. No, no those are two different things. False and true. Truth and false. Truth. A lie is false. The truth is true. I mean, is there? I mean, so, our, our, our whole philosophy so, is achinta beda abeda tatva. It's so not it's like the, the there's only truth and there's only false and there's nothing in between. It's achinta beda abeda tatva. Simultaneously, same and some different. Uh, Banu, that's just kind of getting caught up in words. I think the fact is: is the material energy eternal or temporary? Temporary. Temporary. And is the soul eternal or temporary? Eternal. eternal. So, is not the sense of being the being the body in the temporary body identifying with the temporary body is that not false we're not are talking you, about our identifying with the material you, world are, that's a different subject he's talking about whether the material world is true or false it's a, it's not false it is temporary body, that is what it is so you're, you're talking about the material we are identifying what, with the body what what the material world no, no, is Prabhu, not you any different into than your material. Taking what? into a personal, personal, uh, individual level, you are taking it to a personal experience. That's not, that's not what it is. Um, that's not the subject. It is talking about a subject of the material creation, which is uh, which is not false and it is temporary. That is what is being discussed okay. over there. Is your material body part of the material creation? Yeah. Yes or no? Your body yes. is that part creation of is it part of the material creation or is it eternal, your material body? Yeah. Part of creation. So Bado, what do you say? Your body that you're in right now, is it part of the is it part of Eternal existence, or is it temporary? It is temporary. That is what is that is what is said over there. It is temporary. The material creation is temporary, and the body is also temporary. What's temporary besides the body? The material energy is temporary. Prakriti is temporary, but it is not false. What does define false? <laughs> okay, it's not false. Define real and false or opposites, right? So what is real if it is not false? What is it if it is not false? How do you define it? Everything in the spiritual world, everything about the spiritual world is real. Okay. And everything in the mature world is also real? And that regarding that is what is being discussed in the Bhagavad Gita introduction. It is not false, but it is temporary. So what does that have, what on earth does that mean in reality? It is created is at certain intervals and it is destroyed at certain intervals. Therefore, it is temporary, but it is not false. So define false. What would name something that is false? Something that's not jiva. Yeah. False means to speak a lie. If you speak something which is not the truth, that is the false. Okay. Something no. is. So if a, if something is false, describe something that is false. What is it? A lie. Badu, come on. 
What is what a lie is this, false? A lie is false. Yeah. So what is a lie in this case? I mean, is it if I if I think I am my body, but I'm actually spirit soul, that's a lie, isn't it? The the fact that I think that I am the body is false. I am not the body. Would you yeah. agree, Banu, that that thinking I'm my body is false? Yeah. Okay, so what are you saying constantly false? This is false, that's not false. I don't get what the point is. Because false can only be exist. False is relative. <coughs> There's no such thing as absolute false. False is always compared to real. So if you're saying not false, then how do you compare to real, do you see? I mean, there's on, there are not only two colors, black and white, there are also orange, yellow, red, purple, blue. So which is real and which is false? You know, I, 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 it seems a little hallucinatory, doesn't it? The material it's like a dream is not the same thing as reality. But if you're going to say is the dream false? No, the dream is not false because it's a real dream. But is the dream the same thing as reality? No, the dream is a is an illusion. And not only that, it's a real illusion. But an illusion is not, you could say that an illusion <laughs> is by its very nature false, because it's not real. But Bhadu, you seem to be saying that a dream is not false, that it is real. What I'm that many words in the English, English and the Sanskrit literature to describe each and everything, that is what is being described rather than being sticking to two opposite words to Two opposites or two extremes. There are also words in between which describe to the point. And how how do you resolve this conversation? We're talking about the difference between matter and spirit. Between the jiva and no, the, talking about uh, the, the, atta, the body. Until, what we're really talking about is the difference between the body and the soul. No, no problem. We're talking about material world. That's the body. The material world is a body, no? It's emanating from Krishna, so it's not, not false. What? Well, what do you mean by false? Is, is the material world the same as Krishna? No. No, right? So then what is the difference between Krishna and the material world, we ask? God and Atta. What is the difference? God and God. How do you distinguish between Sat and Asa? Are you saying that asat is not false? Then what is it? Asat literally means that which is not. That's right. Now, is temporary that which is not? Apparently, people, perhaps not yourself, but others, would say that that which is not is false. But you say that which is not, is not false. So how do you make that distinction? I'm willing to learn new, finer things. So how do you explain it? 
I think you are right, Prabhu. It's in Asad. Huh? Spiritual world is Sat, and the material world is Asad. Just like the soul is Sat and the body is Asad. Yeah. So, but you're saying Asad is not false. It is false. Then why are you saying it isn't false? I agree. I agree. I do agree. Right. Huh? Uh, haven't you been arguing very strongly and eloquently that the material body is not false? No, I was arguing yes. about material creation, not the material body, which includes everything, which includes everything. What's the difference? What's the difference between the creation and the body? Isn't the, the body part, part of the creation? Yeah, same thing. Yeah, the body is part of the creation. Mm. So there's Krishna, there's Maya. Those are the two things we encounter as conscious beings. And we don't say Krishna that, that Maya is false because Maya is the goddess of illusion. So Maya may not be false, may, may not be real, but Maya is a real illusion. But illusions by their very nature are not real in the same sense that reality is. We can only, right? How can we distinguish? I think that your argument stems from the Mayavada approach to philosophy, which is trying to equate things that cannot be equated. I don't know. <laughs> and you so definitely didn't come across these ideas from Prabhupada. I never met any Mayavadi. Hmm? I only know the Mayavadi from Prabhupada books. Whatever I know is from Prabhupada. Well, then it should reflect what Prabhupada would say. When we talk, we should reflect what Prabhupada says and not pick on one or two words and trying to turn them sideways. I'd like to understand the Siddhanta. Siddhanta means conclusion. What's the bottom line? Siddhanta means bottom line. What's the bottom line here? That Maya is not false. The body is also temporary. I mean, it is real, but it is temporary. The body is temporary. The soul is eternal. You keep changing yeah. on the body every yeah. life. No, I'm so not doing temporary. anything. I'm trying to understand. Oh, the only crime I'm committing so far is trying to understand you. <laughs> which is not particularly easy. No one says that Maya is by its, no one says Maya is false Maya. We say Maya is false reality. Reality exists in the form of the Jiva, Kursa Loka, spiritual world. Maya exists in the form of the material world. So the Maya in the material world is not real. Even though, unless you want to say, but yes, it's real because Maya means illusion and the material world is a real illusion. Yeah, okay, so the material world is real in that it is a real illusion, but it's not real in comparison to thought. Thought is real in comparison to Krishna. And Maya is real in comparison to illusion. Is, is that right? Or have I missed What's the meaning of Maya? I'm sorry? What's the meaning of Maya? Oh, Maya. Maya is a goddess. She is uh, the goddess of illusion. It's, and tempt, and it, she's the one that tempts us into 
wanting to believe that we are our bodies. Got it. Thank you. She, she is Mother Nature. Maya is Mother Nature. Prakriti uh, is Mother Nature. And Maya is the one that makes everything uh, seem to be real when it's not. Just like a man and a woman, they are attracted to each other. Okay. Pus, blood, stool, and urine. Both parties, bodies, are composed of pus, blood, stool, urine, or they manifest those things. Prophet said so many nice things. But yet, the two jivas inside the bodies of the man and the woman are attracted to each other emotionally, psychologically, and possibly even spiritually, so they ignore the pus, blood, stool, and urine body, even though that's the only thing that makes one a man and the other a woman. So that's how confusing it can get. You know, you have the body of a man or the body of a woman, and yet you're attracted to each other that has nothing to do with the physical body. Because if it were the body is dead, if one, if one if the woman is dead, Prabhupada said no one will pick her up and take her into the room. Meaning, you know, for sex. If the woman is dead, no one will take, some people will, but I mean, let's not go there. So pick up the dead body of the woman. No, it's the live woman. What is the live woman? It's the jiva. What is the jiva and the mind inside of the body? The body is never alive. It's always dead. It's just the chemical reactions going on there. There is no substance to the body that has anything to do whatsoever with the soul. It is only a product of maya in the material world. Asat, that which is not. It appears, the body appears to be a person, but the body is not a person. Never a person. The body cannot be a person. The person is the jiva, who has no form like a body, because of the denivang of the body, we gave up our form as a jiva. But as we develop in the Madhya Madhikari plane, we cannot help but come to the point of being the jiva and therefore having transcendental, beautiful transcendental form that is in harmonious and perfect non-disruptive relationship with Krishna, in a perfect symbiotic relationship with Krishna, the soul, in form. But before we have a form, we are formless, not like Maya bodies. We are jiva, simultaneously one and different with God. The different part is that I am a jiva. I can take on a form in relation to Krishna. But in my conditioned soul state, I identify with the form of the body that I'm in at the present moment. So I'm identifying with this body is not the same thing as having a spiritual form and relationship with Krishna. And that's one of the reasons for the existence of our, um, what you call it, the, um, the league for 10,000 years, is it gives us time to develop our spiritual form. Everyone thinks about their material form as being the self, even though they say, I am not this body, I am spirit soul. Nonetheless, since the spirit soul has no form in the material world, we naturally identify with whatever body we're in at the moment. But that's crazy, to say the least. How could I identify with something that's pus, blood, stool, and urine, and then think it's me? No woman sells her charms based on pus, blood, stool, and urine. She base, sells her self, as she thinks it to be, the female body. She sells it on the basis of cosmetics, makeup, clothes, hair curlers, eyelash curlers, coal, um, mascara, 
thing, makeup to cover up the pimples or the warts. Corsets to make the waist smaller. Brasiers to make the breasts look as though they could feed an army of babies. And all of that is based on pus, blood, stool, and urine, creating the illusion, which is Maya, with that which is not, not false, it's a real illusion. Uh, Maya Devi then projects through the woman and the man comes across, oh, he's full of muscle musculature and he looks works out in the morning and he runs two miles a day and all of that, there's the man. And the woman says, oh, if only I had that man to reproduce with. I want to reproduce with that man because he looks so good. But you take the skin off of that man and you've got nothing but blood and goop. Take the muscles off, take the skin off and take the muscles off. There's intestines. Oh, is she attracted to the intestines? Is she attracted to the blood? Is she attracted to... No, she's attracted to the illusion that this is a swarup of a superior being, even though all it is is a material body. Right? I mean, can anyone dispute that? Beauty contests, movie actors, everything is made based on that. Creating an illusion that the body is the self. So are we saying that's false? Well, I mean, in terms of comparison to your real spiritual form in relation to Krishna, it's pretty damn false. It's very false. Banu, do you agree with that? Banu? I guess I agree with that. Banu, do you, do you agree that the impression that a man and woman give each other is false? compared to the reality of all the intestinal worms and pus and stool, urine, you take off the skin, there's blood and muscles, you take off the muscles, there's intestines. Is that what a man and woman are attracted to? Intestines? Or are they attracted to the false impression that this is a beautiful woman, that's a handsome man? That's, that's illusion, right? The body, they are attracted to the body. How could yeah, but you can say, as long as you're in the body, this body is better than that body. But is it? They both die. I mean, what's the best, what's the good part? You see? So we have to let go of the bodily conception and not try to make it into a mystical existence of or creature of some type. It's not. The body cannot be sacred. It cannot be mystical. It cannot be pure. The body is the coffin in which the soul is being carried around. Shreya Mataji, Shreya Prabhu has some question. Okay. Bonnie, you should answer the question. You're on a roll. Who has a question? Shreya Prabhu. Go on, Shreya Prabhu. Oh, Shreya. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Oh, yes. I have to apologize a million times. I didn't know you were there. I wouldn't be talking so graphically about what's under the skin of the attractive man or the attractive woman. <laughs> It, it is I just joined offense. a few minutes ago, Prabhuji. That's okay. No problem. Um, no, well, okay. I do have a question now. Uh, every yeah. time we talk about, um, you know, the body and um, the soul, uh, we only describe, uh, you know, uh, the body as such. But what happens to the emotions? Where does emotions fall under? Do they belong to the soul or what is it? Because we all get connected based on emotions, right? Well, it, that's, a, that's an extremely good question. Extremely good question. Supposing we have the emotions of <clears throat> a man in a material body who is attracted to a woman in a material body or vice versa, a woman in a material manner. Those emotions are based on the illusion that the fantasy 
of the beauty and the handsomeness of the man and woman is devoid of pus, blood, stool, and urine, and all of that stuff that belongs to the body. However, you have someone like Mirabai, and her emotions are for Krishna. So she is chanting. Her husband became so frustrated by her chanting that he sent her off to be killed with an executioner in the forest. The executioner couldn't kill Mirabai because he saw that she was worshiping Krishna. So he helped her escape across the Jamuna to Vrindavan. And the husband thought that she had been killed, which satisfied the husband and it was certainly better for Mirabai. So the emotions, we're talking about, there's emotions of spiritual emotion, which is sat, and then there's temporary emotions in the body, which we experience towards our, and the best of them are honoring the father and mother, loving your husband, loving your right. wife, loving your children. Taking care of children. No, yeah. Noble emotions, but they're temporary and they're not the same as Mother Yasoda and Krishna by any means, which are on the transcendental platform. So does that mean, uh, um, since we already now uh, getting into the Krishna consciousness uh, mindset, we do understand that everything is temporary. So, so does that mean we are not to give much importance to emotions in the materialistic world? Like, for example, my son, I am already thinking, how do I make his life better? What do I need to provide? All these are the running thoughts of the day. So, so should we just say, Krishna is going to take care of it all and forget it, and or do we have to do something? No, no, no. How, is, how to go about it? Krishna is not the parent of your son. Krishna is the object of worship of all of us. The, the secret to all of this is in, when you're in a material body, you're not saying get out of your material body. Leave your material body and become a ghost. No, that's useless. A ghost is also a material body. It's just a subtle body, subtle material body. No, don't become a ghost or like that, or don't abandon, don't renounce your body. That is what Dharma is. Dharma means you have a son. Therefore, your mother of the son, your job is to be his inspiration to come up to the platform of Krishna. And if you have very noble father and mother yourself, then you offer them your respects. You touch their feet and touch your head. Why? Because your father and mother are your guiding spirit to a higher platform. When, like that, you see? So that is the Dharma within this material world gives you a pathway to pure devotional service. Dharma is not in itself pure devotional service. Uh, uh, Bhagavad Dharma is because that Dharma means you're worshipping Krishna but the Dharma of the mother to the child or the child to the mother, that Dharma is the means by which we elevate to the spiritual platform we're in the Kinnisodakari platform whether we want to be or not and we need to progress through the Kinnisodakari platform until our relationships are so pure that we, we might as well have be talking in terms of spiritual bodies. But right now we're not. We're in our material bodies <coughs> and we are acting, you know, normally, meaning we like to eat, we like to take baths, we'd like to wear dress and clothes, we like to make friends. All of these things are normal for the materially conditioned soul. But as we make it like yourself, you're like a mirror by yourself by nature, you want to expand outward. But that means you can do both. You take care of your son and you become a pure devotee of the Lord at the same time. And the bonus in all of that, the good part, it's all good part when you become a devotee of the Lord. But the good part in that sense is that you become a pure devotee of the Lord and your son becomes a pure devotee of the Lord. And your parents, if they're not pure devotees of the Lord, they will also become pure devotees of the Lord. Because of you. That's the nature. Prabhupada actually went on to say that if a person becomes an Uttamadakari, becomes Krishna conscious, completely Krishna conscious, 
a hundred generations before him, a hundred generations after him will also reach spiritual perfection. But if you stop to think of it, that's a sort of a complicated statement because if they go a hundred generations, what's to make it stop at a hundred? And also, if, what, if they become purified, what's to stop them from making all of their relatives purified? What's to stop them from making only their relatives purified? Therefore, we're talking about the league for 10,000 years. If I become purified, all my ancestors and all my descendants and everyone around me becomes purified. If I become purified or if you become purified, that's what happens. Therefore, it will happen to them too. If they become purified, then everyone around them will become purified. That's how we make everyone Krishna conscious in the course of 10,000 years. You see? So we don't have to renounce our relationship to and say, well, Krishna will take care of my son. No, Krishna will tell you, you're a wonderful Mataji, you take care of your son. You see? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yeah, Shreya, Krishna says Shreya can take care of her son and as Paramatma in Shreya's heart, if she wants and desires either to come up with her own ideas, concoctions, reads comic books and wants to tell her son about them or whatever. No, if Shreya is becomes Krishna conscious, how does she become Krishna conscious? And we had this conversation yesterday by Paramatma, Vishnu in the heart. He will make you Krishna conscious. And if he makes you Krishna conscious, you will evoke Paramatma in the heart of your son to make your son Krishna conscious. In that way, you can end up with a family that is so sublime that everyone is filled with transcendental ecstasy and the pleasure of being in the association of Krishna 24 hours a day. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, a lot, Prabhuji. You, if you like that, you remember Paramatma is everything. And we were talking about to you particularly, there's nothing stopping you from asking Paramatma I'm tired of being making all the decisions. Paramatma, you guide me. You speak through me. You make, show me what to do, Paramatma. I won't want just to, my desire, but what is your desire for my, this jiva, Shraya jiva? What is Shraya jiva? What do you want her to do? You guide her. Be careful though, because it's easy enough to buy into illusion that way too because Paramatma will provide you with illusion if that's your real idea. But if you really want Paramatma to guide you on the spiritual path, he will bit by bit, pade pade, step by step, he will guide you. And that's a very extraordinarily nice experience. Yes, yes, 100% true. Exactly. The, the only thing is, the only thing is when you say Paramatma is going to guide me, I just keep wondering, how am I going to hear that out and know that it is him who's guiding? Because sometimes you get answers from gurus, sometimes from friends, sometimes from parents. Sometimes my son would stand up all of a sudden and say something so different. And you would, you would start feeling, okay, it could be the voice of God that, that's making him talk like this. Or, so, or, or, it, or it could be Maya Devi. The goddess of illusion leading you down the path in the wrong direction. Also, right? Yes, so how do we identify? We have to desire Krishna's guidance, that's all. We cannot assume Krishna will guide us. We ask, Paramatma, please guide me. Please guide me. Make me into a puppet and make me move. Not Maya Devi, but Paramatma. Make me move. Be guided by you, please. And if you do that consistently, you'll begin to feel the difference that when you're being inspired into the mode of pure goodness, 
and when you're being tempted by Maya Devi pretending to be Paramatma. But your interest is Krishna consciousness because that seems to be your interest. I mean, that's your solid interest. And that's unusual, even amongst any group of people, including devotees in, in this Kun temple or anywhere. It's unusual for someone to want to be guided by Krishna. So just have faith. But at least beg Paramatma, do not let me become illusioned. That's, and Christianity gets very tangled up with God and Satan and stuff like that, which is really the difference between Paramatma and Krishna and, Par, and Maya Devi. Satan is Maya or illusion, and Paramatma is God guiding from within. The Christian wants to be guided. So, but they're very, it's very crude the way Christians do it, and there's no way to, there's no checks and balances, there's nothing, no Shastra, no nothing, just an impulse or a, a desire to do the right thing, which is good. It's good to desire to do the right thing. But then, how do you know what the right thing is? Well, they eat meat, they kill people like crazy. <laughs> they slaughter all the Native Americans in America in from preaching from the pulpit that you have to kill them. You know, I mean, that's obviously the opposite of Krishna's teaching, but that's what they did. So it's, your question is very deep, Shraya Prabhu, and, and, and excellent. So I just have to say, I offer you my humble respects for having asked the question and meaning to want to know the answer. So really, if you beg Krishna, if you're thinking, I can use my judgment, which is fine, but then ask Krishna to guide you to use your judgment well, and he will. But be careful, as you say, that it's not my pretending to be Krishna, guiding your temptation, you know. One thing I've realized is every time I fall into uh, this mode of thinking it's Krishna, I first chant the Hare Mantra, uh, sorry, the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. I chant yeah. that because, because I sometimes I'm too scared because I don't know whether I'm really taking the word of God or is it Maya or is it just me making those decisions, giving it the name it's Krishna saying. So, uh, and then I come back. It, it looks like a vicious circle. I'm going in circles. Uh, no, no, that's very good. Because when you chant the Maha Mantra, you're focusing on Krishna. Therefore, Maya cannot get close. Unless you're kidding yourself. If you're chanting while doing something wrong, then Maya is winning and you're cheating yourself. But if you chant Krishna, please protect me from Maya. Well, I'm trying to be guided by Krishna, and you chant Hare Krishna, Krishna will gradually, not immediately, but gradually reveal his intention through your heart. But being in a heart of a human being, being in a woman who is more emotional than a man usually, uh, you'll find that it's hard, but it doesn't have to be hard. Marabai was very successful. Mirabai, you know Mirabai, who sang, she has a beautiful temple in Vrindavan. I've been in that temple. Yes, Prabhuji. I mean, Mirabai, I, I get another hundred questions in my head. Yeah. I'm, I'm full of questions. Well, you're welcome to ask any question. Because I, uh, as far as I've read about Mirabai, she, she was a Krishna devotee from a very young age because of her grandfather, right? Is my understanding correct about her? I have not really read very much about Mirabai. I only know her okay. adult life. She got married. Her husband was annoyed because she didn't pay attention to him. He sent her off to be killed and then she escaped across yes. the Chumura River to Vrindavan. And so, then she... So she so with that story, just, just... In, in a conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that your son? Yes, yes. Please offer him my blessings. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji. Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. If you can hear me, I am offering you my blessings that you will become advanced spiritually like your mother. Concentrate on Krishna 
and you'll have the treasure house of existence opening in front of you. That will happen automatically by concentrating on Krishna and the best way to do that is concentrate on your mother concentrating on Krishna. Okay, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. He said Hare Krishna, Prabhuji? Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Yes, yes. How, how <laughs> old is he? Your son? How He's old? six years old. Oh, that's very wonderful. Uh, Ramachandra's Fantastic. daughter is also, also like that. She always says Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, and looks like that. That's wonderful. That's very wonderful. Hari Hari. Oh. What an interesting discussion this evening. It was wonderful. Yes. And isn't Shraya amazing in terms of her questions? I, I, I shouldn't say that because it may deflect her from reality. But all I'm saying is I honor Shreya's intelligence and mentality and approach to Krishna consciousness because it sounds to me genuine. And I like that. Hare Krishna. Shreya Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So anyhow, can always continue. Don't, don't take anything I say seriously because <laughs> if I compliment say something nice about you, that may not be good for you to hear. <laughs> but all I can say is thank you very much for your wonderful questions and keep them up. Is there anything more or should we depart for this evening? I must say one thing, Prabhuji, this conversations that we've been having, it's, it's just so uh, motivating for me and, and it's like I'm... Uh, corrected and brought back to the uh, path or at least it's giving me the confirmation I'm on the right track so I, I oh, yeah. always feel like continuing talking to all of you but yes my time here in India we're just starting the day and for you it is uh, uh, I'm sure it's too late <laughs> it gets better over time it gets better and better as time goes on I, I must say thank you to all of you but, for allowing me to be a part yeah. of you can always take part earlier if you like. You know, when, when it's eight o'clock our time, we often get started eight, and but now it's eleven thirty it's my time. That's pretty 10, 30, late for yeah. a devotee. Right. And Ananda Dev also he likes to get up early. For Ananda Dev, for him it's like two o'clock in the morning for Ananda. Yet he's still here, and that's very wonderfully honoring us all, and himself to take part and so sincere. Because for him, he likes to get up early and begin his Brahma Hurta practices of chanting Hare Krishna. So that's excellent. Okay. I'll is definitely anything, try and connect soon. Is there anything more? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Yeah. Yeah, Mahaprabhu is just amazing. He, he understands the essence. He says Hare Krishna. And when he says it, it's believable. He, he, does not, he, is, not he is not even slightly duplicitous. He is 100% genuine and sincere. Good night to all. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And Banu, are, we, are, you, are you in charge or Mahaprabhu or, or, or Shravanam? I mean, uh, Mahaprabhu. Yeah, I met him. Who? who uh, Just click Ramachandra, and, and meet Ramachandra for all. Are you in charge or you're in charge? And meeting for all. Just click on it. Uh, Prabhuji, okay. I just made Ronald Singh host. Oh my God. He's not there. Do you have one more thought, Shraya? Or, or are you ready? We can go. Uh, uh, as you say, Prabhuji, we can enter for today. I can definitely uh, hold on and wait for more answers. Yes, yes. 
So for today, we can end it, and then tomorrow we can continue it. And as long as you're there asking questions, all of us are going to make spiritual advancement because these are the questions and approach that make a person into ultimately a pure devotee. And we, I thank you, and we all, I believe we all thank you for your the quality of your questions and your observations as well and your consciousness. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai, we'll see you all later. Hare Krishna. Banu Prabhu, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize he's not there. I thought I had to put it back to him. He actually made uh, me the host. I thought it would be going on for some more time. So I made you the host. Okay. Whoever will be the last person, most likely, will have to enter the host. host. Okay. That, okay. The, that person being made the host. Okay. The recording might be going on. I don't know. Till. Just everybody get, get off. You'll Zoom be session. there, right? Okay. Hare Krishna. The meeting today won't be a live session won't be ended actually. Isn't the live session going to stay on? The live session cannot be ended because uh, Shreya Prabhu made uh, Donald Prabhu, Kamasindra yeah. Prabhu, the host, and he is not there. Yeah, so he's going to stay live for a while, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. What we cannot do anything much for today. We just leave the screen. We just log off for everyone. Hare Bo. Hare Bo. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we're done for tonight? Amen. Jai. Jai. Have a great night. Ramachandra Singh. Jai Prabhu. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.